Welcome to Talking Up Music Education, a podcast from the NAM Foundation. The NAM Foundation is working to assure that all children have the opportunity to learn and grow with music and that music is part of daily living for everyone. Talking Up Music Education podcast shares news and stories about music education from teachers, students, parents, school, and community leaders who care about music education and are working to create more opportunities for music learning. And now, here's your host, Mary Lurson. Well, I have the pleasure of being here with Lori Shell, a wonderful friend from many years, a wonderful professional colleague and a wonderful arts education profession known around the country. And you are here in your current role as? Director of Music Makes Us for Metro Nashville Public Schools. Wonderful. So welcome to Talking at Music Education, Lori. This is wonderful to have you. Thanks, Mary. Give us a thumbnail or an overview of your background in the time before Nashville and what you're doing here in Nashville. Well, uh, if you're looking this at this as a four-act play, I oh. think I'm in Act Four. I I started doing this work as a dancer and a dance educator, and worked in the Northeast to introduce elementary, middle, high school students to the notion that one can learn by moving, and that was really what started me on this journey. And that was a very novel idea at, at the beginning. Wasn't it, it? It was not, uh, it was not too broadly, um, used at Mm -hmm. the time. It was really an an NEA model, very early days about bringing in artists to the classroom. So this, this was in the seventies. And then I, when I moved to California, I really started, uh, looking at more of an administrative role. And, okay, so if I know it works for kids and I know it works for me as an artist, what would it look like if we made that available to more kids? So you ramped it up kind of systemically. I right? did. Yeah. So I, I became an executive director at an arts nonprofit. And did that work for, for many years, bringing a, a, a qualified roster of artists into the schools to enhance learning in the arts. So that was a direct service model. You Correct. were really were contracting with schools. and Right. Great. Right. Okay. And um, are we up to Act 3 now? Yes. And then right. act, act 3 is I, I stepped un, unknowingly and unprepared into the policy and political and advocacy arena. And was with the California Alliance for Arts Education for Where 10 years. Where I think years. we met. Yes. 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 Yep. And in that role as a statewide advocacy organization, it really called upon all my uh, skills and, and knowledge about what arts can and should look like in the classroom. But it, it really forced me to think about how to articulate this for a very different audience mm-hmm. of policymakers, decision makers. The state legislature. Correct. Right? Yes. The other, our other yeah. education organizations, the other right. folks playing in this zone of education funding and priorities. And, and th- so that's where I was really introduced to the idea of multiple stakeholders across sectors. Mm-hmm. It doesn't, uh, I think, what, what I've learned, and I think what others have learned in the field is it, you can't do it by yourself. Right, right. I always yeah. wanted, back when I was a music teacher, said my most important ally was the custodial staff. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's that, not... That was it, certainly mine as a dancer. And it's, yes. not, it's not unlike yeah. uh, the progression of the work that I've done in those subsequent years. You right. have to build these allies. right. And not just in other arts areas, but, right. and I think the arts field has learned this. Yes. In our, that we have to build the allies in the political sector, in the other education sectors and ed- educational administration. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. So then yeah. Nat Music Makes Us is in, in the, um, yeah. Act Four category, but it's not definitive Act Four. I don't, I don't believe. Oh, in any way. I, you know, there right. are five Act plays. Oh, okay, so. okay. <laughs> or there's postscripts that. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> Uh, so I was uh, so attracted to this idea of a district-wide and community-supported music education initiative here in Nashville. Uh, Mayor Carl Dean and the music industry folks have really uh, thought long and hard about how they want to give back to the public schools and to enhance Music City. 
not just uh, as as a place to to come and and experience music, but as a great place for kids to learn and grow up and be prepared uh, for success. So it's it's a wonderful opportunity to me for me to put all of those things in practice, uh, working with multiple stakeholders, working with educators, working with artists, working with decision makers, and put that into a, a very uh, locally based effort here. I remember just um, months after your appointment, you might not recall a conversation that we had, but you said to me, um, it just means so much to be working in community after having worked on sort of this unwieldy, where is the target when you're working on policy uh, and to come back and actually be focused on 82,000 children are in the Now 85. 85,000. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so it's really, so yeah. um give us the music makes us elevator speech so people are aware of truly the what, what this program what we're doing. is doing. Uh, Music Makes Us is a public-private partnership, an initiative with the mayor's office, the music industry, and arts community leaders, and the school district uh, to advance music education in Metro Nashville public schools for all students. Our goal is to create more opportunities for access for music education, to create more participation. Uh, We want more kids making music and more opportunities to stay with music making throughout their um, their school careers from kindergarten through grade 12. And the bulk of the responsibility for making that happen is which side of it? Is it public or private? Is, I mean, in terms of, you know, where... Where does the support come where from? Where the support comes from? Well, the district has invested a lot in into this initiative. We have 200 music teachers in the district uh, and a total of 400 visual and performing arts teachers in the district. And the school district supports all of the full-time credentialed as teachers. As professional educators. As, right. So that's a major investment. Right. And, and we could not do this work. We couldn't advance this work with without that cohort of professional educators. So I would say that the the district is is very well invested in this program, and we have wonderful and generous benefactors on the private side that have also invested in the and program. And they, cur- they create the enhancements. They create the new opportunities or the expansion of some opportunities. Yes. Now, I think as we throw around the term public-private partnership a lot in the field of arts education, and it's important to realize that it's, uh, you know, it's where that core commitment to core instruction is coming from. You're absolutely right. The core commitment to the instruction, to the curriculum, to what it looks like, very much lives inside the district. Yeah. It, it is an educational uh, aspect of, of what we offer here mm-hmm. in Metro Schools. The private partnerships um, have enabled us to have a larger audience, uh, a bully pulpit, if you will, have enabled us to to purchase instruments at a budget far beyond the reach of a school district budget. And also par- a piece of the, the public support, too, from the mayor's office is, is to... Uh, is to enable our district to see it as a priority mm-hmm. and f- to enable st- other stakeholders in the in the community too to see that this is important to our mayor to our community and and to uh, the the health of our students i think that can't really be overstated i mean we talk about when we say public private partnership we immediately right. kind of go to the s- fiscal spreadsheet right and what you've just said isn't even on the fiscal spreadsheet. It's the intention of a community, and it's the the statements and the endorsements, right. right? That support what's happening on that fiscal spreadsheet. So. But you, you and I both know that they're saying it, and then they're saying it and meaning it, right? Right. So I, mm-hmm. I want to applaud this community for their authentic endorsement mm-hmm. of music education. Uh, the CMA Foundation, in particular, has has stood up and stood side by side with the school district in advancing music education in our schools. And at the end of the day, I think it, it just was simply a incredibly intelligent move because this is a city that was really so much of, of its identity right. is in music and the entertainment field. So many artists are living here now. 
I mean, there, and there is, uh, there's a, an energy to give back and, and now mm-hmm. there's a, there's a focus and there's a target. And I, we're saying, and I'm kind of guiding Lori in this discussion to be, because it's an example of really for every community. Not every community is Nashville. But every community has um, these elements and these assets. I mean, there's children and there's schools and there's school buildings and budgets and mayors. There's a goal for a better community. And I think this, this is an example of so many of those elements coming together. There are people who care about children and mm-hmm. care about the future of their communities. And mm-hmm. I think that's that's really what's at the heart. Here. At the heart, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And I... Um, so much of um, our work at NAM and NAM Foundation is built on this belief that, you know, parents really want their children to have this opportunity. Right. It's up to institutions to, at school districts, private-public partnerships, to open up these opportunities for right. as many children as possible. A before and after shot. You well, said okay. this is your fourth, starting my fourth, fourth year. Right. Um, you know, you're now a Nashville citizen. So, but let's talk about before and after in terms of this, the program itself. Okay. So before we did have full participation at the elementary level. We have music and arts teachers in every one of our elementary schools. At middle and high school, the participation was 47 percent and 24 percent, respectively. And now, three years later, uh, we're still at 100% at elementary and increased middle school participation to 56% and high school participation to 26%. We've also seen a growth in the number of years our graduating seniors are able to stay with music. So we, we've been tracking the one year and less and one year and and more than one year participation, and we've grown from 35% of our students were able to take music for more than one year to 46%. That's big. It is big. Yeah, that's it is big. Because so yeah. much of what music learning is is to stay in a program. Right. Stay, stay find the connecting right. links. It's not one and done. Right. There's a lot of learning that happens mm-hmm. in multiple years. Mm-hmm. We've also seen increased participation in all genres, in chorus, band, orchestra, general music, and uh, our contemporary programs. Mm-hmm. We've added 10 new choral teachers at the middle school, which w- we had identified as a, as a real need. And we've seen increased participation among all subgroups including all the all of our ethnicities and we're a very diverse community including economically disadvantaged students and English language learners we've all seen we've seen an uptick in in participation across all groups and this also underpins the value of counting <laughs> you've been counting along the way yes we right. have yes and it hasn't been easy but right, right. we have and yeah. and i think it's important to demonstrate to our uh, Multiple audiences. Our school district leaders want want to know what's happening in the inside the school district with this program that they support, and our funders and the community want to know what what difference is it making. So the goal was expansion. The data shows expansion, and then there's some yeah. other benefits to students too, right? That well, been- that's without question. the right. The first round of uh, the first study that we did two years ago was to show what the impact is on our students. And it, it showed a very, very strong correlation between participation in music and attendance in school, for example. Um, students who participate in music attend an average of 11 more days a year, which is significant that's when you're counting like, days. And, and that's how school districts are reimbursed by their states right. for their state appropriation for education. Right. I mean, right. again, if you if we if need you want to turn it into here, dollars, right? Yeah. Right. Uh, we learned that uh, music students are engaged, focused, happy, excited to come to school, feel like they have a family that they can relate to in their school setting. And, and again, on the quantitative side, we see uh, a correlation between music participation and ACT scores and grade point averages 
in graduation rates. Which support our national data as well. Yes. But again, you're doing this work in a, in a kind of a nuclear community. Right very, a very local. I, yeah. I, it's, yeah. it's true that, um, not only are, uh, politics local, all politics local, then, uh, change within a school district is, is a very local issue. Yeah, it's re- quite remarkable. And I remember when that study came out, the first study, which I believe the NAF Foundation supported, mm-hmm. if I'm correct about yes. that. I forget yes. which series of, and I think it was announced just at the Midwest Clinic and we had a support music coalition event at the Midwest Clinic in Chicago in mm-hmm. December. Right. And Nola said that as of that day, that study had been downloaded 20,000 times just within a day or two. I mean, there is a hunger for this information yes. from other communities. So, so that's a really, yeah. really important. Yeah. Any other thoughts about the impacts that you would like to share? Well, it, this is, I, I like to tell everyone it's an iterative process. We and don't. I love that word, by the way, <laughs> iterative. Tell us that, give us a, and I had to look it up when you told me, it said it told me the first time. So that word is, means? It means that we didn't know the answers when we started. So important to remember. We didn't know what it should look like. We didn't know what was going to work. We didn't know who the key players were going to be. We didn't know where the true support was going to come from. It was important to get a strategic plan in place and to set out some some pretty lofty goals, but how we get there and how we continue to move the needle is very much a learning process. And once I learned truly the meaning of that word, and I've learned it again from you, I realized that uh, most everything that uh, we have done together has been an iterative yes. process. And I'm yes. so glad you're in, in there in it with me. You've been yes. um, um, an advocacy and policy professional for uh, many years now, Lori. What consistent themes or ways uh, to do this work are have developed for you? Beyond the word iterative. Right. right. <laughs> I think leadership, l- leadership is an, also an ongoing process. Mm-hmm. It's, it's not a noun. It's a verb. I think that stands out for me as being so essential to this work. We need leaders in the mayor's office. We need leaders on our school board, in our administration. We need teacher leaders. There's a leadership role an opportunity for so many people who are doing this work. It's it's not about top down. It's really both top down and bottom up. Uh, a lot of what we are trying grows from the needs of the teachers as they express them. So teachers have the opportunity to become leaders through this process, mm-hmm. and elected leaders have the opportunity to show their commitment as well. And sometimes we the word leadership or leader is can be intimidating right mm-hmm. but it's also when we care about something we right. can actually work and assign leadership to people right we can delegate leaders <laughs> well, I mean I, I need to learn that trick to delegate well, but yes but I, I mean we can compel in folks to come together and leaders will emerge if we ourselves don't want to be the leader. I, I think what you're saying and, or how I'm hearing it is, is that there, we want people to see themselves in this work. Right. right. And, and by, uh, outlining and articulating what, what the process is and what's needed and how, how many voices and roles there are in this very complex uh, picture, I, I think what, what we're trying to build is a place where people can see themselves and want to participate. Be part of a, a, yeah. a change movement for arts education. Right. You know that the NAM Foundation's one of its primary programs is the Support Music Coalition, and you yes. graciously served on our steering committee for many years, I think as long as we've had the coalition. I think so. It's, which is yeah. now just over 10 years. Yeah. Um, and you've been a great advisor, you know, mm-hmm. which mean, which isn't always saying everything's perfect, guys. It's come back to say maybe these, these are things that should be considered. You've been very helpful. So what do you think are the assets of the coalition? 
I mean, again, you know, we're talking to you, Lori. We need your help. What must it do, new and ongoing, to grow a community of advocates for music education? Well, again, I, I think assets are, are people. Right. And you've assembled a remarkable coalition of like-minded people in many walks of of life and industry. Music industry, artists, right. entertainers, teachers, right, community leaders, politicians. Right. right. I, I think right. that's that's the biggest asset. Mm-hmm. The people are out there, they've signaled that they want to do good work and you're helping to guide them toward mm-hmm. what that might look like. Mm-hmm. What I love about the work that you've done in the last year is to take it to the communities, is to make it very real in these uh, community events that you're hosting, forums that bring together these multiple stakeholders and allow them to tell their story. But with you bringing a national spotlight on that, I think everybody sits up a little straighter and and listens carefully to what's being said. And this uh, is our Support Music Community Forums. We did six of them last year. Mm-hmm. They're a result of our Best Community for Music Education program in sort of a secondary contest, a video contest, which are wonderful submissions right. from students all over the country. Right. And then the winners get a, a Lennon bus res, a two day residency. And then we zap into town and do a national webcast. And we'll be doing three this okay. coming in October, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, and Miami. And then three more at the beginning of 2016. And you're absolutely right. I mean, they have been remarkable experiences to stand in a school gymnasium with a combined community. Right kids ensemble of little kids through high school every i mean almost the entire i don't know what they were doing in the community that day uh, because everyone in the community was there sharing with us and realizing that the spotlight was on them for for something very important and that was providing this opportunity for kids to learn music in their schools it was just it's um it's it's really basic you know and it's really important so yeah that's very helpful yeah well, I, I think it's an extraordinary opportunity for people to give voice to something they've been wanting to do and feeling and, and talking yeah. about, but didn't quite know how to bring it together. And I think the, the Support Music Coalition operates around some key themes yes. that people can identify with and use. They can carry those themes into yeah. their meeting with a school board right. member or developing a coalition or submitting an application to Best Communities. And right. then they can come back to this experience, listening to talking at music education or a support right. music coalition webcast. And they realize, ah, I identify, I am part, I'm going to take more information back to my community. Right. So it's a, a loose model, but it, it's, I think it's working for people, but we always keep asking our steering committee and our advisors, yeah. how can we do better? So thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, so final three, final thoughts. Give us three essentials for advocating for music education? I think having a passion, knowing what it has either done for yourself or for a child, telling the story, stepping back into the the role of how do you move a big initiative forward. I think having a driver is important. Many voices are important, but having somebody who is assigned or a team who is really assigned to make the progress, to execute the plan, to show the results, I think that's an important part of what we do. And it can be a loud driver or a quieter driver. I, I, you know, I sometimes the driver has to be No, no, like, I don't mean no, ha- it, having it, it, cracking it, the whip. It, it, it can be a right. relentlessly getting it done driver right. that, that I want to talk earlier about right. assigning the leadership, right. recruiting the leadership. Right. right? Um, as, as long as the, that person or team knows that they have that authority. I think authority is, is the, is the flip side of mm-hmm. that. You, you may have people who are wanting and willing to do this work, but if the rest of the community doesn't give them that authority, doesn't share that, that recognition, then it won't, it won't fly. Mm-hmm. It won't go as far. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know if that's, that's three. Well, I think we're two and a half. One okay. More, one final. Okay. Having, having good friends. Uh, I think our relationship has, has had a great opportunity to grow and, and flourish with the work that we're doing. 
And I think it's always important to have sounding boards, mm-hmm. uh, people who can tell you you're crazy or tell you it's the best idea. Or tell you it's tough. Or, or tell you or it's, I'm trying, it's hard. I'm trying and trying and no yes. one's, I'm not getting through. What, how, what language should I use now to yes. make the case? Yeah. Uh, being able to yeah. reach out and, and touch someone is, I think is really key. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this has been a remarkable conversation as everyone is, be it informal or this is formal. And uh, we we encourage everybody to go to the website, Lori, which is? Music Makes Us is Music Makes Us, no caps, dot org. Dot org. Very easy. You can tap into the remarkable work of this program in the Metro Nashville Public Schools. So we thank you all for being part of our Talking Up Music Education program with our wonderful and important visit here in Nashville, Tennessee. And we hope you'll join us next time. Thank you, Lori. Thanks, Mary. Talking Up Music Education is a podcast created by the NAM Foundation. To learn more about how you can support music education in your community or how you can be part of the work of the NAM Foundation, visit our website, www.namfoundation.org, or join us on Facebook at facebook.com slash NAM Foundation. You can also follow Mary on Twitter at Mary L-N-A-M-M. 